Okay, since we're past 10 o'clock, uh, the Board of Supervisors of the County of Del Norte and the governing body of all other special assessment and tax dis taxing districts for which said board so acts is now meeting in regular session. Only those items that indicate a specific time will be heard at the assigned time. All other items may be taken out of sequence to accommodate the public and staff availability. Supervisor Hemmingson, will you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any new employees to be introduced? Okay, I'm seeing no new employees. Uh, Council, any other reportable actions out of closed session? Nothing to report. Okay. Okay, at this point I'll request, any, are there any deletions, corrections, or additions from board members to the agenda at this time? In order to add an item to the agenda, the matter must have come to the attention of the county subsequent to the posting of the agenda, and the matter requires action before the next regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors. Okay. So uh, Chairman. Yes. We do have an urgency item that we'd like to add to the agenda. It is a waiver request to the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program. And uh, the urgency is that we need to have that sent off as soon as possible. It's for uh, support of the harbor. It's actually a time-saving device. And uh, the harbor master is here to speak to it when it is brought up. I move that we add this item to the agenda. Second. It's been moved and second and public comments. Seeing no public comment. Jeremy, can you please follow up? Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Okay, it's been added on. And we'll bring that up in a couple minutes. Um, at this point, we're going to um, We'll now hear brief reports um, and announcements from board members related to programs, projects, travels, and committees. Uh, Supervisor McNamer, why don't you start? I did have a few and left my notes at home, so I had to do them real quick okay. today. Um, actually, I had a very busy uh, weekend, but had beautiful weather for it, thank goodness. I attended a LAFCO meeting just last night with Supervisor uh, Hemmingson and um, just discussed uh, some of the sphere of influence areas um, that, that maybe need a little more attention. We need to look at some of those in, in expansion. Um, and I wanted to bring up the front page of the second part of our newspaper today has a lovely picture of my emotional daughter crying. <laughs> it, uh, the um, JC's surprised her with uh, a very beautiful plaque, thanking her for her um, volunteer work with the Junior Miss program, now called Distinguished Young Women, but this is her last year to do that, so I'm just really proud of her and wanted, wanted to let everybody know that that was my girl. Um, I just had some follow-up appointments with uh, several constituents, um, that are raising some concerns uh, because it has to do with the other part of my life. I cannot bring them up at this time. And that's about it. Okay, Supervisor Hemmingson. Yes, thank you. Um, I, uh, I went to the uh, candidates forum uh, that was uh, at the fair, held at the fairgrounds uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think there's another forum tonight at the fairgrounds. Um, I think that's at six o'clock or so. Um, had a meeting with uh, the lily bulb growers uh, about the uh, coho salmon recovery plan. Um, there was some a lot of information that uh, that I didn't realize uh, how far away the lily bulb growers were from the uh, from the river. But I think the impacts maybe are going to be on the dairy farmers. So I think we need to look at that issue um, of, with the, with great concern. Um, I had uh, a local transportation commission meeting um, where we had some discussion on STAA traffic. Um, the Friends of Del Norte uh, requested a geotechnical study um, for last chance grade, which didn't make a lot of sense. I think there are geotechnical studies out there. I think Caltrans has them all, have already addressed all those issues. 
So, but that was interesting. Um, had solid waste agenda review. Um, had a uh, uh, RCD meeting uh, where most of the conversation that I was there, we talked about the Coho recovery plan and also the Hurdy Gurdy Creek acquisition, uh, which I'd like to address a little bit later. Um, and then I had a meeting with uh, Caltrans representative Kevin Church. Um, I, I had some questions about the traffic study that they did um, for the STAA traffic on 101, um, which they have predicted that there would be possibly a 3% increase, which is so minimal that it's, it's not even hardly worth mentioning. So um, uh, I think the, uh, the uh, issue that, uh, that uh, Friends of Del Norte uh, had with the, uh, with the geotechnical study, I think has uh, really doesn't raise uh, the issue that I think they think it should. Um, and as Supervisor uh, McNamer said, I uh, had a LAFCO meeting last night. She already went over that. That's about it for me. Okay, thank you. Supervisor McClure. Yes, I've had a uh, fairly rough two weeks, so I didn't do all my meetings. Um, <clears throat> I did make it to the Coastal Commission after um, a canceled flight in Crescent City, drove to Eureka, the flight was canceled in Eureka, drove all night to San Francisco, made it to the San Francisco airport at about three in the morning and so spent the rest of the night at the San Francisco airport, made it to Los Angeles, got to the meeting on time and when I got to the meeting, the commission had moved our permits to the consent, which was an extremely good sign. So the permits for the harbor were approved. There's one that was, a, um, that was postponed, but it was only postponed because it's an after the fact permit anyway. So all of that went very well. And I participated in the EMS meeting where we talked about medical services and different impacts and the budget looks pretty good. There was lots of discussion about the shortage of um, medicine in America and how we need to be taking a look at that and making sure that our hospitals locally, our Sutter is our base hospital which handles all the narcotics for the EMS teams where Eureka is having trouble because there's a possibility that their base hospital wants to pull out, which would mean that the EMS ambulances would may not have the medication that they need, so we're working on that. I um, went to the family fun fair on Saturday, with, the, and it was great, with all the kids making things and eating healthy stuff, and it was just jam-packed with families, so that, I, that was pretty fun. And, um, as a person who is a member of Job's Daughters Council, I would like to announce that next Saturday we're, and Sunday we're going to sell doughboys. So if anybody needs a doughboy yeah. fix, we're going to be down at the tall ships with doughboys. So it's an opportunity if you miss having a doughboy, you can get some your your doughboy next Saturday. So write that down. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Finnegan. Yeah, it started off uh, last week with the first five. Family, Children Families Commission meeting. It reports from all our partners from the Vistas and the AmeriCorps and all the good programs that are going on. You probably have heard some of the radio ads recently. Uh, a couple of the programs the First Five is doing is one, encouraging uh, parents not to feed your children soda pop, rather drink water, healthy foods initiatives, but also the one that you have probably heard is on the radio is turn the TV off, especially for the youngsters. Uh, talk with them, play games with them, read them a book, just don't plant them in front of that TV. You might have a tougher time with your teenagers turning the TV off and getting away from the Wii and the Nintendo games. But uh, anyway, good, good program. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend the Tea Party Forum um, last Tuesday. I got to participate in that. It's always good to speak to the constituency. Attended the Economic Summit. And the Economic Summit at the Elk Valley Rancheria was, it was really good. It was nothing really new, but uh, some of the reports brought us up to date on some of the efforts that are going on in the community and what really was a validation of what we've been doing for the past several years. Um, the projection for population increases are not what they were last year. Uh, they slowed down a little bit, but there are increases. But uh, a couple of the things, uh, the Film Commission uh, had a report, the Rancherias had a report, but Tri-Agency, Bill Renfro did a great job on the updates of what's going on, um, has 
uh, 199.com, which is the harbor, the uh, airport, uh, sewer, the broadband. And um, of course, in a time when people say, oh, nothing's happening and it's taken 10 years to do something at the airport, he was quick to correct people that a lot is going on, that a lot of it's behind the scenes, but for those that don't attend those meetings at the harbor or at the tri-agency for be updated on the broadband and how close we are to redundancy and what that means uh, to economic growth, or the airport. Uh, people don't think anything's going on, but uh, oh, by the way, there's a lot going on. Go to the website, and I'm sure you hear the, the campaigns on TV uh, as well. But uh, it was, so it was a nice validation there. Then I went to the Regional Council of Rural Counties meeting, and one of the first thing they did there was to change the name. So, well, it's still RCRC, uh, but it was the Regional Council of Rural Counties. There's nothing regional about Modoc, Del Norte, Imperial, Inyo, um, so they decided to change the name to the um, Rural um, Counties Representatives. Uh, I better double check with the RCRC. Uh, the Rural County Representatives of California. Uh, so, and it mainly helps some of the lobbyists on behalf of RCRC. When they walk into a legislator's office and you represent yourself as regional and rural, uh, half the ears shut down. So. Now it's actually the rural representative of California and has a little broader base approach. Talked about the state responsibility areas. The, there are several bills in the legislature that are supposed to attempt to stop, do away with, or limit the fees that CAL FIRE is going to be sending you a bill for starting in June. The Jarvis tax people are, unfortunately, it looks like they're going to wait until those bills actually come out, if they do, before they will file suit. And, uh, of course, for this last year, your bill will be in June, and then for next year, it'll follow up 30 days later in July. So there is movement afoot to try and stop those. Those could be up to $150 per parcel of anybody that's in the SRA, and that is the majority of the county, people on railroad, on parkway, uh, all over the county. So also as per dwelling, yes. Legislative. Both. Bill, you're going to get a bill in the mail, too. Okay. We can always Let, ask her in public yeah. comment if you... It's something I've been reporting on for, for months now, but I'll be happy to update you. Um, but also, we talked about the U.S. Forest Planning Rules. And uh, while the Regional Council of Rural Counties and CSAC has uh, endorsed and crafted, negotiated a memorandum of understanding with the Forest Service on how we will communicate to talk about future forest practices, and while we have had good local meetings regarding coordination, and the forest supervisors are finally using coordination as well as the regional foresters, the plan, the planning rule, actually is taking that word out. So at a time when we're finally making progress, the planning rule is actually going in a different direction, talking about cooperating agencies and taking a step back. So it's something we need to remain vigilant on, be diligent in our pursuit of this, and pay attention in the next couple of weeks uh, for the formalization of that planning rule, and I know Supervisor Hemmingson is aware of that. And then there was a myriad of state and local legislation that was also talked about, then had a state association of supervisors meeting. Um, not too much differently happened there. There's a lot of information out there regarding the new ballot initiatives. We're just going to wait for them to, to actually uh, be approved for, to get on the ballot uh, rather than take a position on initiatives that haven't qualified yet. Uh, a lot of pending legislation is out there. Then had another meeting regarding the rural rehab uh, meeting at, that CSAC hosted, and that basically is in the implementation of AB 109, which talks about um, uh, probation taking over some things and the non-non-nons getting released to counties and then counties putting them on ankle bracelets of probation. Uh, there needs to be a more regional approach in some of the rural counties because the counties themselves do not have uh, the money nor the, um, the wherewithal to have, for example, a reentry facility. But perhaps Siskiyou, Trinity, Humboldt, um, you know, Modoc could all go in together and have one regional. Uh, so we're looking at regional approaches to maximize the resources there to uh, accomplish what the communities really want to have happen. Um, and so it doesn't seem like I'm ignoring you, and I know you're going to get up later and ask about it anyway. But the SRA fees is 
there was several legislation, the state responsibility area is an area that is mapped by the CAL FIRE that says that you are, uh, that the state is responsible for fire protection. So while you may have a uh, volunteer fire department, the primary responsibility is with CAL FIRE. CAL FIRE wants to assess each parcel owner per residence uh, $150 per year. And um, the argument is that they're saying it's a fee. Well, if you assess a fee, uh, then a fee has to, you have to provide additional services. And no additional services are going to be provided. It's a tax. Make no mistake about it. Uh, but it is going to show up. It's, they still don't know how they're going to do it. It's probably not going to be through the county tax assessor collector. It is going to be through the Board of Equalization. They don't even know what's going to happen if you don't pay it. Is the state then going to put a lien on your property and be able to foreclose on you? So it is, it's a wicked web they weave, but it is a fee. It is a bill that is going to show up as an additional tax per resident, per house, um, on every parcel that is within the state responsibility area, and it is most of Del Norte County. So we are at the table fighting. And with that, I think uh, that was about it. Sure. All right. Well, okay. I, I think I said I might have saved us a little problem down the road there. Okay. Um, myself um, and uh, Supervisor Hemmingson and staff met with the Farm Bureau uh, regarding this coho salmon recovery plan provided by the National Marine Fisheries. Um, and we have a letter in today's agenda we're going to bring up here real shortly. Um, and I think it was, a, for us, it was a very um, helpful meeting because uh, there's some things that came up that hadn't occurred or there was information that we weren't aware of that we could include in the letter. So I want to thank the Farm Bureau for their attendance of that. That's very helpful. Um, attended a presentation by the school district on proposed new changes and reform that they have going in on implementation of education within the district. And there's some encouraging th things there. Uh, it seems that they're all becoming on the same page. Uh, which is helpful. Uh, attended the economic summit um, and the fish hatchery was a, a pretty interesting presentation. It's always, that's, that's a successful program that's been going on for several years, but people aren't aware of the success they've had and the issues they run into. So it was good to get that. Um, that's been going on in Smith River for decades and um, very helpful. Um, had an update on the tribal uh, economic development that's happening within both tribes, which was encouraging. Um, one of the interesting uh, presentations we had was uh, it was done by the Visitor Bureau, but specifically the Film Commission. And as all of you have probably read, there's a movie that's going to be filmed um, here pretty love in the time of monsters. Um, the encouraging thing and what you've got to see, which people aren't aware of, is now that we're, we're participating in this through the Visitor Bureau, is that we're beginning to get production things up here. This is just kind of the start. I mean, we have so much natural resources here that Hollywood and other areas would like to use in their movies and commercials and TV, um, they just don't know about it. And I think having that coordination and um, Cassandra down in Humboldt County, who's the film commissioner, has done a, a great job beginning to use Humboldt Del Norte in the partnership. And I, I think it's encouraging. It is one area that we haven't really tapped into. I mean, everyone can remember Return of the Jedi and E.T. and all those things. Um, and those had a pretty big impact on the community, but it wasn't really calculated at that time. What you will see going forward when these things happen is it's, you're going to have some data to back it up as the expectation of how much money was actually spent in the community. So, and I think this could be a really encouraging area going forward. And that was one of the good things I took away from the, the meeting. Um, in between the meeting, timing of the summit and our local transportation commission meeting conflicted. So uh, Supervisor Hemmingson and I had to run to the uh, to the Transportation Commission meeting. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to dovetail with what he's saying on, on the Friends of Del Norte had some, uh, they, they, it really was a stretch. It was a grasping at straws to say we need a technical study done on 101 because of the work being done on 199 and 197. Um, and I think I almost got an endorsement from Friends to reroute Highway 101 through the park, which I thought was kind of encouraging. That, that uh, they didn't quite go that far, but they were, they'd consider it. So that was a stretch. That was a stretch. <laughs> um, but I, you know, the representative would say they'd consider it. So that's encouraging. Um, had a conversation with uh, uh, Mr. Johnson regarding uh, replacement of the flagpole in the cemetery, uh, and we're working on that. 
um, had a gender review, um, and then I want to remind everyone that we're having a, a meeting this Monday. Uh, it's a joint meeting with Curry County. It was publicized in the newspaper, just in the classifieds, but um, it'll be at Howe and Quit Hall up in Smith River, and I think times 3.30, I think, is start time. So um, we haven't done one in a while. There are some mutual issues that we both share, one being the Secure Rural Schools money um, that's gonna, that is done right now uh, that needs to be reauthorized. This, the second is law enforcement issues and some other things in economic development that we want to discuss with, with both counties. Uh, I know Curry is in a real bind at this point uh, financially, and, and uh, anyway, there may be some possibilities to work some solutions out. Um, and it's always good because there always seems to be this imaginary line with Curry County. We have a lot in common with them and should be doing a lot more partnerships with them. So um, other than that, uh, Supervisor McNamara, you had a couple things you wanted to add? Uh, yes, uh, and I just wanted to confirm that that meeting is at 3.30. Mm -hmm. I wanted to comment on um, David's information that RCRC has changed its name. I like the new name and I'm glad it didn't change the acronym because I do feel that we lose a little bit of the identity for a while until people realize that, you know, it's still the same thing, but um, sounds a little different. I did forget to mention, not having my notes uh, with me, that um, I did attend the Republican Women's Luncheon, which was a potluck, and I think we had more dessert than we had main entrees. <laughs> it was good, and that was what I needed to okay. add. Okay, thanks. Okay, at this point, I'm going to oh, yeah. actually uh, tweak the agenda a little bit. I'm going to bring item 15 up <coughs> for discussion now, uh, which is the letter, um, uh, approve and authorize the chair to sign a letter regarding comments on the NOAA's National Marine Fisheries Services Draft Sonk Coho Salmon Recovery Plan as requested by the Director of Community Development. So we want to have a, uh, Kevin or, or Jay? I appreciate you bringing this forward. Uh, this letter is just kind of, um, since the board has not taken any official action, but many of you have expressed opinions as well as staff, I've tried to capture what those opinions are. I've attended other meetings where other people have expressed opinions, but I tried to limit those uh, to just what I had heard from the board or from county staff. Uh, if uh, things need to be added or changed here, this would probably be the great place to do that, and we can do that and get that off since May 4th is the deadline. For the comments. Okay. Question. I thought it was a great letter. I thought you brought forth some of the factual arguments that we talked about at the high school uh, and put it in black and white. Um, it did a great job. Any other comments from supervisors? No. I would suggest that we also um, CC this to the regional water board and then the state water board also underlining non-peered review scientific study. You bet. And I, I would uh, hope we'd actually also notify our federal representatives too at the same time. And state. It, and state, because yeah. that is a disturbing deal that, uh, I mean, when, when this whole thing started out, they didn't, weren't even gonna hold a meeting in Delaware County, which is incredible, because we're right in the center of this thing. So, um, but it's not the first time that's happened, I guess. Um, okay, so I'll entertain a motion right now and then we'll open up for public comment. I have move to uh, authorize the chair to sign the letter and have it sent. Second. Okay, public comment. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Harry Harms and I am uh, general manager of Hastings Bulb Growers as well as uh, Smith River Farms. We operate both corporations inside of uh, Del Norte County as well as uh, Brookings, Oregon. And I am uh, sort of apparently, as I have reached senior membership in that group, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, been appointed a committee of one to generally speak to regulatory and uh, labeling issues for pesticides. Uh, I don't know why, but I guess nobody else wanted the job. Anyway, I am very, very happy to see that the Del Norte County Board of Supervisors has weighed in on this issue. I mean, this is a significant issue for agriculture um, and all areas of agriculture. Anybody in the Smith River Plain is going to be impacted over time with this. 
One of the biggest problems that we see as an industry with the overall plan is, first of all, that it's based on a lot of what they refer to as best management information, best management, well, frankly, best management guesses, best management judgment, I think is what they refer to. In other words, they extrapolate from relatively weak information a scenario that they would like to see happen. I understand that they had very limited tools to work with. People really do not understand a lot about the species that they're trying to recover. They really do not understand a lot about the local conditions in sp specific estuaries and river systems, and they certainly do not understand much about ocean conditions. Um, I would certainly like to, first of all, compliment uh, Mr. Hamlin on being able to get a very quick grasp of what some of these issues are, and they are all adequately and accurately reflected in the letter that he has proposed to you. So we are very much in support of that letter. Um, one of the biggest problems is, is nobody really knows what the historic level of coho has been in the Smith. There is very, very little factual data to suggest what it was and even what it currently is. According to Jim Volvogel, and uh, who was, of course, the extension uh, fisheries management gentleman for Zone 1 for, I don't know, 30 years or whatever it's been, recently retired, and according to uh, Zach Larson, who is the uh, head of SHRAC, right, uh, I believe would be his, I mean, these are the two guys locally that understand the Smith River about as well as anybody possibly could. Neither one of them were even asked to provide input into this program, okay? Neither one of them believe that the current population of coho salmon in terms of breeding numbers exceeds about 700 right now. That's about what they believe is the current number. There is no data to tell us what historically it was. Nobody knows. The only thing we know for, for sure is that since it's been listed as an endangered species since 1997, the recovery is still not in any way documented. There is no real level of documented change. So even the, the listing didn't precipitate anything, right? So here we go again. Now, NIMS has suggested that they think that magic number should be 6,500 returning fish. Both Jim and Mr. Uh, uh, and Zach uh, believe that that number at a third of, of 6,500, a couple of thousand fish, would probably begin to start stressing the ability of the river to handle it, right? So there's just, there's just because of that, we think this program's gonna be around for a long time. And it's a voluntary program, you know? I mean, another big issue we have as an industry is the people that they think are contributing to the most to the degradation is the agricultural community, yet they take the position of being very antagonistic in terms of this document. We are not painted in there in a very pretty picture. And it would seem to me like if you're going to start in a voluntary program, the first thing you do is try to warm up to the people that you think have the biggest shot at helping you with a recovery program, not paint them into a corner. And that's pretty much what they've done. Um, <clears throat> So anyway, we, we think the plan's gonna be around for many, many years, because we don't believe, uh, people that I've talked to don't believe, that would seem to have better knowledge than I would, that this is probably gonna go away anytime in the near future because the numbers are very high. At the end of the day, we are very, very concerned that eventually this will become the basis for a regulatory program. Um, and uh, so some alteration in this program we feel like that gives us some outs and one of our suggestions in our letter that's written, written from the Easter Lily uh, organization is that they take the time to visit with some people locally that have some good knowledge and that they try to write a plan that says we believe the number is now and we think that is a threatened or a stressed population we, at another more reasonable level, move to a recovering population, and finally somehow we meet, meet some goal. But this would give future regulatory agencies some benchmarks to work from and maybe allow a little flexibility under this system. So, I mean, that's, that's what we've been trying to do. The other thing that they um, have done is they've cited a lot of undocumented, unpeer-reviewed, 
studies in this thing, and we are trying to get the, the biggest issue that they seem to come up to with as far as the lily industry is concerned is essentially a non-point non source pollution issue, a potential for a non-point source pollution, right? Obviously, we've got point source pollution controls in place, and they never once discussed the fact that we are currently working with the Department of Water Quality, so I think your suggestion to send this information to water quality is very apropos right now, um, as we are currently working on a water discharge management plan for agricultural lands in uh, Del Norte County, and a number of us here uh, are serving as on an advisory committee to that board. There is piles of science out there, not a single scratch of which has been even mentioned in the coho recovery plan. This document was prepared in the uh, middle 80s by Susan Warner, who was with the Department of Water Quality. It is entirely on groundwater pollution related issues in the Smith River Plain. And it discusses ways and means and why they do not believe that we currently you know, we tried to, it tried to help us move to a system that would alleviate some problems that we had many years ago, okay? Right. So there is good stuff out there that they're not paying any attention to, um, and uh, it's got some problems. One of the things that we hey, particularly- Harry, could I, I'll, we, because we we'll get some other people up here too. All right, very quickly. Okay. I just want to point out a couple of things. It is, it is very commonly stated in the plan as well as you read it and I mean, there's just a sort of a, the biggest thing we've got is sort of a publicity problem, a public perception problem. There's a public perception that because we apply pesticides, they have got to be moving into the Smith. I mean, there it's almost like a foregone conclusion they're in the Smith. There is not one scratch of test data that indicates that to be the case. Furthermore, we are constantly accused of applying pesticides in the floodplain or in the estuary. I've got two maps, which I'm happy to show you around. It locates the Easter lily fields. Uh, the hatchwork is every field that gets used for Easter lilies. They are used on a four-year rotation. So of all these colored squares, only one quarter of them are being used in any given year. And in the particular year that this map was done, which I don't have an accurate date on, um, the, the, the kind of the brown squares are where lilies were being planted and the rest of the colored squares are fields that would be in rotation to be used in a subsequent year. We are all dairymen and cattlemen, even though we're in the lily, so I'm kind of focusing my comments on lilies. There's other people that want to talk about the other thing, but we, we rest on both sides. <clears throat> the main thing I'd like to sh you to understand here, the one map shows our juxtaposition to the Smith River. There is not a single lily field that's within a thousand feet of the Smith River. And you can see that clearly on the map if you look at the scale. The other thing is, so we are not applying them in the Smith River and we are not applying them in the estuary. An estuary by definition has got to have water. I guarantee you we're not doing that. And finally, um, we are not applying them in the floodplain because the second map is the 500 year floodplain for Smith River and you can see where the locations of the fields are. So, you know, we have no intention of being anywhere in the floodplain because that's a bad idea when you spend as much money to produce a crop of lilies as we do. And so we've figured that out over the years. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys doing this and thinking about this. And uh, this is just going to be another anchor that we're going to be dragging for a long, long time. Thanks, Harry. Mr. Arms, are you leaving a copy of that with us? You may have that copy, um, and, or I can get you additional copies, and I just attached the ERLF letter to okay. it so you can get an idea of kind of some of the positions that we took as well. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, sir. Any other public comment on the letter? Yes, I'm Connie Morrison, and um, uh, he said pesticides. I'm not prepared to talk on the subject, but there's something I wanted to bring to people's attention, and that is. Um, and so far as pesticides and all the, well, the food we eat, and that's what the issue with the salmon. Um, I just received a message that uh, the radiation from J Japan from the earthquake uh, is now, I think, over 500 Con times. 
God, I, and I'm not going to, because we're going to do public comment on any oh, This is about the pest size. This, well, no, this is specifically about NIMP's plan for coho sand okay, recovery. Okay, let me say this. Yeah. I, if your letter just says, lily fields, salmon, there's other considerations to the salmon, what's happening with salmon. Also, the bumble, um, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, um, I'm going to open it for public comment in just a second as soon as we get off of this topic in particular. Um, so you will have a comment if you want to talk pesticides in general. Um, that'd if be great if I could, do. I think she's going to make a, a good point, which is what's happening in the ocean, whether it's your radioactivity or not, right. needs to be considered and is not included in the plan. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Right. And we have evidence of that because of the bumblebees, the bumblebee collapse, and it's going to affect all of us economically. I was watching, I just got a, a neat thing from Dr. Merkel's site on the bumblebee collapse, and they sell vegetables at the, at the store. It could be fish. But the prices just go up, 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 up. Bumblebees, one bumblebee does 100,000 flowers a day. If we had to go out there and hire people to pollinate 100,000 flowers, fish, whatever, it's all happening in the water, it ends up in the water. All right, thanks, Connie. Any other public comment? certainly not as eloquent as Harry, but Harry had my book and he gave you all the lily stuff. Um, we used to dairy, we do not dairy any longer. Joyce, you probably want to announce Put your this name this down. Stuff. Oh, I'm Wait. sorry, yeah. I'm Joyce Crockett. I, my husband and I owned and operated um, the Crockett Ranches in Smith River and we also purchased United Lily. Uh, I do not work actively in the lily industry, my son and my daughter do that. I do have a letter, though, that uh, we would like to, we sent to the National Marine Fisheries, and I have copies for everybody. Do you want to? And before I start on my little spiel, I do very much support the letter that you are sending, and we very much appreciate that, and thank you, too, for writing it. Um, I'd like to stress a little bit about the things that we do to protect the river from the cattle industry. Um, you know, they've, they've lumped the cattle in with all the rest of this, and while we do no longer operate dairy and have not since uh, Davy could not, uh, we do have the largest beef ranch in the valley, and uh, they always lump that in. But I would tell you right now, we have three herds of elk that rival the amount of beef cattle that I run and we have to put up electric fences to keep them out and so on and so forth. No one ever mentions, mentions that. Uh, somewhere in this plan it talked about woody debris. No woody debris. We have approximately 50 acres of woody debris and someone is more than welcome to come down and look. On the lower part of my ranch, it's all fenced off. The willows, we, the, we have no longer have the gravel permits. So the willows have grown up, the gravel's in the willows, and on top of that is tons and tons of woody debris. And uh, we fence off approximately, I went over it with Donnie this morning, my son, 75 acres of riparian along the Smith River. And in fact, we fence off the entire Smith River and most of the Morrison Creek. We do not own all the, Morris, the area that the Morrison Creek flows through, but we fence that off, off from the cattle, off from everything. Our drainage ditches, which they're always after you over the drainage ditches, we have bridges over our drainage ditches. My husband built bridges over our largest drainage ditch after the 64 flood. We have four concrete bridges. Our cattle travel the bridges, they don't go through the ditches. Once in a while they'll go down and drink, but not often. And we have mitigated as best we can all the damage that cattle would do to the Smith River or the Morrison Creek, which is in our area. Um, I don't know what else we could do. I, I do have one problem with this. In all of this, no one mentioned the uh, conservation. Uh, Del Norte should be, the conservation district should be included in this. No one has included. The conservation district, and I'm a, on the board of directors, represent all the farmers, but we're not included. We're not brought to the table at all, and that's really unfair. Um, we do not plant bulbs anywhere near the river, as has been testified before. 
And in fact, we rent land in order to have our four-year rotation period and not put bulbs. The lower end of the ranch would grow beautiful bulbs because it's silt. 64 flood covered our fences. There was so much silt down there. So it's not dedicated to ever having bulbs next to the Smith River. And that really irritates me when I read all the stuff that they say we're, we do and do not do. Right now we're cleaning up after the flood. I have somebody's hot tub cover. I have glass bottles. I have plastic bottles. And we're always cleaning up and picking up. And we rebuilt all the fences since it was torn down by the flood. So really, the cattle industry, I think, police themselves quite well, just as the bulb industry has. No mention is ever made of that. They just take us all in big, one big lump and say, you've done it. We didn't. We didn't. And we do not. Thank you for listening to our complaints. Thanks, Joyce. Any other public comment? My name is Linda Crockett, and I'm the Del Norte County Farm Bureau Manager. Um, I just want to say that the Farm Bureau um, totally supports your letter and appreciates the time spent to read and draft uh, plan and comment. It's a large plan with many rivers, tributaries, creeks, recovery action cost maps and conservation partners for many counties. Um, I have spent a lot of work on the Smith River portion of this plan um, and I came to the conclusion it's not, it's let's make, this isn't what my paper says, paper's worse. <laughs> <laughs> It really, I came to the conclusion that it's not really, it's, let's make the Smith as bad as possible so we can get as much money as we can through these 18 conservation partners that are listed. And with those, they, um, five are non-local conservancies to save the unlisted Smith River at 124 million in the first five years. 11 million in the first five years for in-stream structures and a couple thousand for scientific collection in the ocean. I just wonder how long those structures, those 11 million in the first five years, um, how long those structures would remain in place with our amount of rainfall? And where do the coho spend most of their life? In the ocean, they allotted in their plan about $3,000 for those studies. The plan attacks agricultural, the hatchery, and pretty much everyday life for the residents of Smith River with almost all flawed data. Why? I did a lot of work on the National Marine um, Fisheries biological opinions um, on pesticides that resulted from the Washington toxic case that are used on our lilies. They totally ignored that data. Um, all those, all, almost all the results have been, are, are in. And no, not mentioned. Instead, they chose um, a private pesticide assessment from a private environmental group. Um, I just wonder, is this really about saving the coho and the Smith River? Um, or is it really about lying? I think, I think personally, it's about lining the pockets of these conservation, non-local partners. Um, anyway, that's all I'd like to say. I really appreciate your letter. It's very, very well done. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. Any other public comment? Hello, I'm Stephen Westbrook from Reservation Ranch in Smith River and also the president of the Rattie Creek Fish Hatchery. I would just like to say that, thank you for sending the letter. Um, Rattie Creek Fish Hatchery has seen phenomenal returns in the last five years and if the estuary were as bad as the plan likes to state it is, I don't think we would have seen that. I'd also like to point out that there's approximately $120 million in the plan for road decommissioning. Um, I don't think that has a lot to do with the estuary, and I think that the county should, I'm sure you're on top of that, see where all of those roads are in light of everything else with the road closures that's going on. And other than that, thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Any other public comment? Hi, my name is Andrea Souther. I'm with the Natural Resources Conservation Service serving Del Norte County, and I work closely with the Del Norte Resource Conservation District in Smith River. And um, NRCS would use a partner plan such as this to prioritize funding, prioritize projects, 
educate ourselves and the clients we work with on creating high quality habitat. So it's an important plan and I'm glad that the Board of Supervisors has taken the time to comment on it. Uh, the Del Norte Resource Conservation District did have some concerns and does have some concerns over the estimated number of spawners. And um, we trust that um, as the five year as updates and scientific information become available and information on actual restorable habitat is provided to NIMPS, that they're, they use their adaptive strategy to update their plan. And in any watershed, there is a potential for agriculture to discharge non-point source pollution. However, the actions identified um, are on the, the far end of the scale. There are many best management practices in place currently and a lot of work in um, layers of um, time, effort, and regulation has been spent on agriculture and to prevent discharges to areas such as estuaries. Given the lack of water quality information, I believe items such as diluting pollutants in the Smith River estuary and items such as hydraulically disconnecting runoff are at the far end of the spectrum as far as management practices that are in place or needed to restore hab habitat for coho. I do um, look forward to working with NIMPS and using their final draft in helping the coho recover. Thanks, Thanks, Andrew. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing no public comment, we'll bring it back to the board. Any comments, questions by supervisors? I have one. <clears throat> I have another idea because after listening to the identified lack of data that's been pushed into this plan, and we already recognized there was a lack of any kind of peer review. I'm almost thinking that we need to add a paragraph that urges National Marine Fisheries to um, temporarily hold off on adopting this draft, not just answering our questions, but adopting this draft, because if we found, if we found all these issues with just our rivers, what happened all the way north and all the way south? There may be just that many issues all up and down, and it would be an opportunity to request that there be more of a presence of ocean fishery, ag, and um, food pr producers to be at the table to discuss these estuaries about what's happening and, and where it's at. So maybe we could put, put a little push in there that they hold off from adoption and actually re-fly this with everybody at the table. I don't know. Oh, that sounds like a good idea to add that um, because the problem with plans is once they're on adopted and they're on the shelf, even if you protested and said, hey, this is fraught with lies and innuendos, somebody five years from now is going to pick that up and, and run with it. And so to, to hold, to ask, to point out the deficiencies of it is imperative, but also to ask for delay of implementation or acceptance of it until all the communities have sufficient input, I think is called for, and I would uh, like to add that amendment. Any other? comments well I, yeah I was just gonna <clears throat> I was just gonna mention that you know that's not unusual for these agencies to leave Del Norte County out of things that they're going to put in place that are affecting everyone in Del Norte County um, so we're certainly not surprised by it but I do agree with both Supervisor Finnegan and Supervisor McClure that we do need to request that they withhold um, doing anything with this accepting it um, promoting it, doing anything until they have the real scientific data and until they deal with the industry itself um, in, in the things that they've already done and already accomplished uh, um, in moving forward uh, with the pesticide use and, uh, and the other things they've done to keep the river healthy uh, to this point. So just throwing that out there. Supervisor McNamara? I fully agree that we do need to add that. Um, 
I never even thought about until Supervisor McClure brought up, you know, what's happening above on the rivers, you know, n not even maybe in our county mm -hmm. that needs to be looked at also. Good point. You know, it, it, it is, uh, it, it's disturbing that one man's agenda can find its way into an actual federal agency's documentation and taking a scientific fact instead of conjecture. Because that's Mr. King's study, that's basically what it is. It's not peer reviewed, there's no scientific science, there's no science to back it up. Happens all the time, Mike. Um, I, well, it's, it's, you know, it's scary because it's, it's you know, this, this documentation, even though it's voluntary, is similar to wet cement. You pour it out and it's flexible and stuff, but it's not too long before that thing hardens and we're stuck with it. And the unfortunate thing is the impact it will have on the entire community and process and all for one man's agenda. And it's all, and not all that depends the species on species at all. Yeah. And, and, and I think everybody's in agreement that we want the coho to recover. We want to have a healthy run. We want to have a healthy river. And we want to have a healthy industry. And all of that is doable. And so a plan, yeah, we do need a plan. But the plan needs to be everybody. And we need to make sure that the plan is based on sound decision making. And we've hit that in here. And now I think we ask them to delay it. Possibly we will find out that up you know, that the rogue might have this, a very similar, I forgot how high it reached, didn't it reach? Pardon? Humbug. Humbug all the way down to the eel. Right, so I mean, here we have all these river systems, and if we have these errors, those errors may be replicated, so. It, it is ironic, though, that there is, what was it, Oregon uh, catch limit for coho? 8,000 coho? Where, I mean, where's the logic there? 8,000 coho. That's, you know, and now we're talking about, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, this well, is a federal agency too. It should be coordinating a little bit. Let them, why don't we take the 8,000 and just transplant them? That's, well, the, the ultimate irony was that we need to uh, breach Lake Earl at a lower level and more often. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Go figure. Okay. Uh, any other comments? You, uh, Connie, Connie, you, I've got public comment coming up, but you can't comment on this because uh, comment you have to do at the dice. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Kevin. Thank, Great job. Thanks for your presentation on the Farm Bureau. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Moving on in the agenda, we are going to go to public comment since we're past that point. So, um, let's, uh, Um, you know, I actually will take, we'll take the urgency item here um, that was on there. Idea. That should be a brief one before uh, we open public comment. That was added to the agenda, request for waiver to special conditions for county grant uh, 09-EDOC-603. Moved to approve. Second. Okay, moved to approve. Public comment. Yes, thank you. Uh, Chairman Sullivan, my name is Richard Young. I'm the Harbor Master here at the Harbor. We're here today to request uh, that the county request a waiver of the requirement that we have all the funding sources in place and that we return to the Economic Development Advisory Committee at uh, CDBG prior to them releasing the funds. The issue that's really before us is when can we get started with this project? And we very much need to get started as soon as possible. Um, the pilings will take a uh, number of months to get here. They can't be ordered until we have the funds uh, released at CDBG. We have a number of funding opportunities before us to fill the gap. Uh, one of those is a grant funding opportunity, a Tiger grant that the harbor's applied for. Uh, whether that comes through or not is sometimes problematic. Uh, last rounding, the Tiger grants only, I think they they uh, granted only 5% of them, so it doesn't have a high probability of success, but it was an opportunity and we pursued it. Uh, we do have a loan application of Boating and Waterways for $3.1 million to fill the funding gap, and we are preparing and working with the USDA Rural Development 
with another uh, loan application for a similar amount that would also fill the funding gap. So we're confident that th that funding gap will be closed. It's just not closed yet. And so we're asking that we be allowed to proceed with the CDBG funds prior to uh, having all the financing in place. We know that's a little unusual. It's also a little unusual to have a harbor that's been wiped out by two tsunamis. Uh, and, and we have, um, you know, at, at the current count, we have about $50 million in damage that's, uh, that's on the table. And so the funding gap, the uh, total funding gap, somewhere between three and $4 million, that's a lot of money, but it's a small percentage of the repair work that needs to be done. And so I'm here today to answer any questions about, uh, about the funding sources, other sources, uh, the work that's planned, or any other questions you may have. Questions from supervisors? Yeah, obviously we're gonna be supportive, um, but it would have been nice to, in our packet, to be able to see exhibit one. And we just finished it this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the reason I say that is because underlined, underscored in this, it says the county will pay back all grant funds under this contract if the project fails to meet the two CDBG federal regulations. In other words, the subtlety here is, is people in the newspaper and on TV are gonna say, oh boy, the harbor's on track, they've got their financing, they're going ahead, they're doing what needs to be done, economic development, rah, rah, and we all agree. What they need to hear is that the county is the one that's standing, that's propping you up, and it's gonna be on the hook for over three million, for the entire CDBG grant, should you fail so don't screw it up. and and I think now that's real support that's real, know, that's support. real support and, and people need to understand that and, and we need to understand that that's right and and just to be really clear the harbor is also on the hook because we we've, we've passed that responsibility through and we we accept it we understand it uh it, it starts with the county you're exactly right uh the good news is that the the uh, CDBG requirement that needs to be met is to preserve the jobs in the harbor. That's the really the key fundamental uh, right. issue for CDBG. And right now today we have 75 commercial boats in the harbor. Uh, my estimate is that those boats would average about three jobs per boat. So there's well over 200 jobs directly on the boats in the harbor. Uh, the minimum that we need to demonstrate in order to meet the CDBG requirement is 143, I think. So the jobs are there. The jo even in the damaged condition that the harbor's in, the jobs are there. Yeah. And so we're, we're confident that uh, well, we'll be able to perform that. And we appreciate that, um, and we go a step further. While the harbor's looking at maintaining those jobs, which is very important, we know, as you know, that our vision, as well as yours, is growing that economy, and it's growing those jobs. Uh, so we're, we're there with you. I'm there with you. We'll vote. Well, well I, and I, we really appreciate that. We understand that. We're in your district, and, uh, and we appreciate the support. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, you are. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> and, and so we appreciate the support and the understanding, and, and we know that, uh, that everybody describes the harbor as, as the centerpiece of the economy or as the local economy and critically important. We use those same descriptions when we uh, try to emphasize the importance of getting this done to CDBG. And when we believe that the key to making the harbor work, if we don't have the marina, we don't really have a harbor. It's the fundamental piece and the key to, to going forward. So that's why there's so much urgency to make this happen. Uh, we need to get things, we need to get things done, not only for the, for the local economy and for the community, but for the harbor's own profit and loss statement. Uh, we're in dire financial straits because of the lack of revenue because we don't have spaces to rent. And, and despite all the concern over coho salmon, uh, some of the salmon are doing well because we have a full salmon season this year. For the first time in many, many years, we have uh, people calling about slips and... Sports season. Sports season, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Exactly. We don't have a commercial season, but, but um, we have a full sports season this year, and the recreational fishermen are important to the local economy as well. And, and we don't have the slips that we would really like to have to accommodate those recreational fishermen, and that's to the detriment of us all. So it's, a, it's really important that we move forward with this. So 
Does Wes or Noreen or Senator LaMoffa, do any of them have a personal relationship with this Mr. Brandy Berry? Uh, I believe that they do. I spoke to um, Mr. LaMoffa's local representative this morning and they've been in personal contact with uh, Mr. Brandy Berry. Okay, and, and Wes and Noreen also? Uh, haven't spoke to their uh, representative. We should probably make sure that maybe Maybe the three of them take Mr. Brandyberry to lunch and stress the, the significance of this for our community. Right, we understand and, and uh, you know, in fairness to CDBG, I think there, we need to move this up a notch and that's what this letter will do, is move things up a notch and, uh, and we've already seen more cooperation based on some phone calls that have been made and okay. we've seen more cooperation from CDBG recently, so. This will move forward. Okay. It's funny how the same man's name is at the same problem we're having with the micro micro enterprise loans too. Some people seem to be sure gifted Scott, at Scott Austin. would be happy to buy lunch. Scott would. Yeah, it'll be on Scott. Lunch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would just like to say too that I worked at that marina years ago, when it was Bayside Marina, and those sport fishermen docks were absolutely packed, from April until September. I mean with probably three times as many slips as we'll ever have again. Well, we hope not. <laughs> you know, it's, you're exactly right. Uh, at one time, the harbor put in over 500 recreational slips, temporary slips, in addition to the permanent uh, commercial side slips. And it was an enormous boon to yes. the local economy, which, which speaks to, you know, all of this is connected. And it speaks to recovering the salmon and, and uh, restoring both the recreational and the commercial fishery. This at one time was a very profitable commercial port for salmon and uh, that supports not only our fishermen but the processors and the people who, uh, who depend on it uh, for shore-based jobs as well. So do you think that we'll have that many slips, um, sport slips again? You know, it all depends on the recovery of the salmon. Yeah. So I'm hopeful but you know, you're struggling with, uh, with the issues, the salmon issues. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, volunteering at the Pacific Fishery Management Council and mm -hmm. they used to say their decisions were based on the best available data and that has an interesting acronym. <laughs> and, uh, and I see that things haven't changed much in, uh, in the last 10 years. Depends okay. on whose science you want to believe. That's right. Whose data? Any well, other? Comments, questions from supervisors? Okay, uh, public comment on the, uh, on the urgency item. Scott Peller, district representative for Central Amalfa. Um, I'm in constant contact with Richard, as you can also imagine, also being a harbor commissioner, and a rather extensive package of information was provided to the capital staff yesterday as all is developed. And there is a meeting with Mr. Brandemeyer today with our legislative director to discuss this and several other issues that are within the district. Primarily emphasizing that five, four different state legislators and one congressman has been to our harbor, has an interest in it. And we'd like to see this whole process sort of go a little bit smoother than what it has been and to see what we can do to facilitate that. So that meeting will be taking place with Mr. Brandemeyer later on today. Brandenberry. Brandenberry. Oh, okay. Brandenberry. I might start the meeting off he's that Patrick way. Talbot, instead of yes. Brandon Meyer. Patrick Talbot's <laughs> boss's boss. He's, he's the uh, yeah. program chief. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Any other public comment on this item? The money. I went to the city council meeting. They were talking about annexation of the harbor. Mm -hmm. And as the previous gentleman said that they are really in debt, uh, I've looked at the regional water quality thing and there are fines up the yin yang for the harbor and as a taxpayer i don't want to absorb their debts so and then with the grant money that one of the requirements is that they encourage not allow but encourage public meetings about things and i get little blips about uh in the agendas i have no idea what's happening um I can kind of surmise from the dialogue, but I really wish you would encourage, because everybody has um, something to add, just like the, the lily bulbs and the conservative people and the farming people. 
Um, the sustainability, he said it creates jobs for fishermen, and those are private things, but I would like to also see in a public comment where sustainable jobs for people, I don't know where you worked, I doubt that you were a fisherman on a boat though. No, but I, I handled the, the mortgage. So rentals. you were there day after day with yes. a sustainable job. I'd like to see jobs like that created with our grant money, the taxpayers' grant money. Thank you. Any other public comments on the urgency item? Okay, seeing no more public comments, I'll close that and bring it back to the board. Um, unless there's any comments. Uh, uh, I would like to just clarify for Connie. At that time, the harbor was having Bayside Marina handle the moorage for the sport fishermen. I actually worked for the marina, not for the harbor. Is that job still there? Not handled through the, the marina, uh, okay. through, through which is now the restaurant. Okay, uh, Jeremy, could you please pull the boat? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Okay, so now we will have our timed item for uh, public comment. Members of the public may address the board on matters which are within the jurisdiction of the board. If you're addressing the board regarding a matter listed on the agenda, you may be asked to hold your comments until the board takes up that matter. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less, and please give your name uh, when you get up to the mic. Hi, um, I'm Cooper. Um, I'm commenting on the item you took up early. I didn't make it in time for that, but I have very strong feelings about the, the copper poisoning of the Smith River. Um, I really want to see how this Board of Supervisors can call yourselves economically concerned for this community when you take a stand against all our salmon fisheries of the Smith River like you have today. Your letter is so uninformed, I can't believe I'm getting a letter like this from a board of supervisors. Every newspaper I read has this as headlines and, and, I'll re and this is common knowledge that the water tests that were done on the Smith River were done by our Regional Water Quality Control Board. They are not Greg King's water test, as you make out in your letter. This is such an uninformed, ridiculous letter. It, it, it should be laughed off the planet that it's coming from a board of supervisors that is so uncaring for the most important tourist industry that we have, our fisheries. How could you do this and turn a blind eye to this extreme problem? The water quality tests indicated that there is such a die-off of food fish that the test indicated 100% of the food available for salmon in that region. 100% die-off, not 10, not 20, not 80. 100% die-off of the food for fisheries. From copper poisoning, the level is so extreme. We have to do something about this. You can't turn a blind eye to something that is so important to our fisheries. You, you can't call yourselves pro-economic and turn a blind eye to this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? I, I, I need to. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to bite. I, yeah. I, I, I need to, to clarify that I don't believe it was a blind eye. I believe that when the women were asked if this was a peer-reviewed study, the answer was no. And if it, it doesn't matter if it's from a very um, credible source of where that study happens. In order for a study to be able to hold water and be able to be used as application of law in the future, that study must be peer-reviewed. And that's, that's what we are asking for, is a peer review. Because that, if that's going to be the basis, that's what we have to have. And the women that presented said they didn't believe it was peer reviewed. Thank you. OK, uh, any other public comments? Yes, Lee. Uh, good morning. I'm here today to urge you to join the California State Association of Counties. Looks like we are. 
I'm Leif Gill. I am the area director for SCIU Local 1021 that represents 50,000 public employees in Northern California. I'm here today to urge the Board of Supervisors to join the California State Association of Counties, the California Federation of Teachers, and SCIU California in publicly supporting Governor Jerry Brown's initiative to increase personal income taxes on annual earnings over $250,000 over seven years, to provide a quarter cent sales tax and use tax increase over four years, to provide needed funding for K-12 education and community colleges, to protect state funding of realigned public safety programs. Our county cannot continue to provide public safety, child support, mental health, health and human services, the Family Resource Center, or road maintenance without state funding that is jeopardized by the state's projected $8 billion budget deficit. If you have not yet individually signed the petitions to put this initiative on the ballot, please come talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. So seeing no more public comment, we will close the public comment part of the agenda, and we will go to the consent agenda. And at this time, I am going to remove number eight because I have a conflict. So uh, I'll take a, 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 a motion to approve items one through seven. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any public comment on items one through seven on the consent, the consent agenda? Seeing no public comment, Jeremy, could you please pull the vote? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair McNamer, could you uh, lead it on number, number eight on the consent agenda? Yes, I'd be happy to. I would move to approve and authorize the chair to, or vice chair to sign the attached agreement for construction repair services with Parker Construction. Second. I have a motion and second. Chair, would you pull it? Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. I wasn't able to vote on number eight due to a conflict of interest with a business relationship with the contractor. Okay, moving on to items, I'll entertain a motion uh, for budget transfers, item nine through 12. Move to approve budget transfers, items nine through 12, which is budgets uh, 02, 03, 05, which is 04, 02, 03, and 05, uh, and as well as the one for the budget transfer within the sheriff's budget unit for utility costs. Second. Been moved and second. Any public comment on the budget transfers? You have to be up here. If you could state your name for the record and. Any more? $117,000. I'm sorry, I just got here. I just got this. Um, could you kind of briefly say what it's about? You can do with $117,000? What, what are you talking about? Which? Five, nine through 12. Uh, nine, which is within the sheriff's budget unit, as the supervisor mentioned, would be to uh, pay for utility costs with the, within the sheriff's corner budget. It would be a transfer from a uh, payroll savings line in order to do that. Um, Ten is within the grants administration budget, which is uh, essentially for the Didson pilot project, which is the sonar project on the Smith River funded by the Department of Fish and Game and it is to uh, replace one of the lenses on the sonar unit. Uh, the 11 was within the sheriff's budget unit also, and that actually results in a general fund savings, which allows one position to go from 25% to 50% grant funded. And uh, number 12 is within the health and human services budget. And uh, Specifically for this one, these are uh, non-general fund related and it is for the replacement of vehicles that are in excess of 100,000 miles. Okay. And I would point out, as I think the CAO attempted to do there, that these are not new monies that we pull out of air or that we take from salaries. These are within approved budgets within that specific department. Okay. Any other public comments? No, you've already had your say. Um, could, no. Jeremy, could you please pull the vote? Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Chair Sullivan? Okay. 
We do have a proclamation on the consent agenda, too, which Super Supervisor Hamilton has agreed to read. Uh, try not to get tongue, tongue okay. tied here too much. Uh, Board of Supervisors, County of Del Norte, State of California, proclamation of mental health month, May 2000, <coughs> excuse me, May 2012. Whereas mental health is fundamental to the overall health of the County of Del Norte resulting in productive activities, fulfilling relationships, and the ability to adapt to change and cope with adversity. And whereas the recommendations included in the Surgeon General's report on adult children's mental health and by our local mental health board and others emphasize the importance of promoting mental health and the early identification of mental illness. And whereas mental illness such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, and anxiety disorders affect one in every five families annually. And whereas the treatment success rate for schizophrenia, major depression, and bipolar disorders compare favorably to the rate for chronic physical disorders such as heart disease, diabetes, or cancer, and whereas scientific research, research is producing tremendous breakthroughs in the understanding of these disorders, resulting in more effective treatments allowing people to reclaim full and productive lives. And whereas mental illness should not be shrouded in stigma and discrimination causing those who are affected to not seek care. And whereas the Del Norte County, whereas Del Norte County takes pride in its history of upholding the dignity and civil rights of all of its people, including those coping with mental illness. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County of Del Norte Board of Supervisors do hereby proclaim May 2012 as Mental Health Month throughout Del Norte County. Passed and adopted this 24th day of April 2012. Thank you. Gary? Actually, I would like to have uh, Rita and, uh, and Ed please, and, and Jorinda please come forward and accept our proclamation from the Board of Supervisors. And thank you for your support throughout the years for our mental health services. It really does mean a lot to all of us. <laughs> All right. No. That was pretty no, slick no, the way no, you guys got out of the day. day. <laughs> thank you all for, for being here. I really do appreciate it. Ed and Rita are also on our local mental health board, along with uh, Supervisor Hemmingson. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are going to go on to um, item 14, which is consider miscellaneous legislative and budget matters pertinent to the County of Del Norte. Authorize the chair to sign and send appropriate letters with respect to matter. Oh. I guess he's going to be again. Um, with respect to matters pending before the state or federal governments. Um, go ahead. Oh, okay. Budget. Uh, at this point, uh, we've received information that's come in from Peterson Consulting on about 14 different um, areas of legislation, along with multiple uh, spot bills and proposed bills. At this point, we don't have any that uh, require the board's support or uh, anti-support in that case. But uh, we will be bringing it forward as they come forward. Anti-support. <laughs> really? uh, yes. There is one that RCRC sent you regarding AB 2577, asking for support, CEQA. People that want to come in after the deadline and make testimony right. no longer needs yeah. to be included or heard, we and that's something to. that has stopped us forever. AB 2577, yes. that was another one I wanted to talk about. Oh, I thought you were done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but presently under the uh, 14 different uh, categories, um, there are none that required support at this point. The uh, one that uh, Supervisor Finnegan uh, has uh, brought up is specifically for the California Environmental Quality Act. It is a uh, time-saving device that would allow agencies to not react to late comments. And as such, um, it does typically affect any project that is subject to CEQA. There are some projects that obviously are more controversial where late comments uh, may need to be addressed as a practical matter. But uh, out of this sense, um, I would uh, ask that the board direct staff to prepare the letter and send it. And uh, specifically for the time savings that it would uh, allow for staff. Do you need a motion for that? I think direction would be enough. Just direction. 
Unless anybody's opposed to that, I nope. support that. Um, it's not just the time saving either. Quite clearly, it has been a tactic that has been employed by the opposition to stall and circumvent that process and actually undermine that entire pra practice. That's right. We've seen it on everything from highway improvements on 199 to Lake Earl breaching. I mean, you name it, any resource issue has been used against this county. It's something that we should support. That's right. Um, I would also like to request uh, staff to uh, prepare a letter um, to uh, at least uh, Randy Moore, uh, Region 5 uh, Regional Forester. Uh, we uh, just recently got official notice that the Forest Service is um, moving forward on acquiring the Hurdy Gurdy Creek property. And in a meeting that uh, Supervisor Finnegan and I had uh, with Randy Moore, where he was present, um, recognized that we have a no net loss resolution and that if the county of Del Norte was not in favor of that purchase, that the forest was not in favor of that purchase. So I'd like to get a letter um, restating that. And also, um, if they are going to move forward, make sure that we're at the table um, for any mitigation um, possibilities. Well, and I would, I would dovetail and say the school district needs to be at the table too. Um, that should be a player involved with it as well. Okay. I'll, do, we, do we get a second on the motion, I guess? Well, that was direction. Or just direction? Direction staff. Direction is so, good enough. It's direction. consistent with what we did in the past. Okay. Exactly. Direction staff. Um, and just to dovetail from your legislative budget manager, we'll go right into the brief report from the county administrative officer. I'll make a brief. Uh, we, on the agenda today, the Board of Supervisors approved a contract for some improvements in the Manual Arts Building. That's a building behind us, and, and this is in association with the fire that occurred a couple of summers ago. Um, it was an interesting one because we did have four contractors go through the mandatory walkthrough and only one bid. And it was interesting in that sense because typically we have received more than one bid recently. Um, our budget meetings for the requested budgets have begun. They started yesterday and they'll be going pretty regularly now for the next two weeks until then we can get those all complete uh, and prepare for the proposed budget at the end of June. But these uh, meetings will probably be the first round. We expect a, a second round of meetings also for the requested budgets this year. Uh, last year we met with the occasional department that had issues or had requested something beyond what was the previous year. Um, I suspect we're gonna be meeting with most of these departments again, just on the general purpose of looking at every potential savings. Uh, we are currently in collective bargaining with two employee groups and we will be continuing those. Uh, with the uh, uh, resignation of Jerry Cochran as the veteran services officer, uh, I have gotten a little bit more involved in veteran services and I met also with Mr. Johnson from the VFW regarding the uh, deteriorating flagpole down at the veteran cemetery and we are in the process of having that pole replaced uh, that the county will be the uh, supplier of the pole and the VFW will have it placed and it, it has the support but uh, we're going to put up a little bit uh, hardier pole and that should be in place certainly by Memorial Day. And uh, we also discussed with uh, both the uh, maintenance person and VFW and we'll be talking with Rich Weir uh, about getting Alder Camp out prior to Memorial Day to do a complete uh, uh, work over of the cemetery and try to get it as, in as best shape as we can before that ceremony. Um, in addition to what Supervisor Sullivan brought up about Highway 197, we have received a letter, regard, it's a cons consultation letter um, regarding the closure or uh, the work that will be done right in the area of Ruby Van Dievener Park. It won't affect the entire park there will be some uh, delays, in this case, road closures for up to 15 to 20 minutes, um, but they are in consultation with us. Um, we continue to review the bills that are coming through. As I mentioned, we, there is a tremendous number of spot bills out there. Those are bills that have been put in place, but are really not having any action on those at this point. But we need to continue to review those in case they have any effect on the county. Um, and from the standpoint of the Secured Rural Schools road, uh, and Roads Fund. Um, the House of Representatives did take up an alternative uh, bill 
It is similar to the Senate's and it very well could be acted upon later in the year. And if it acted upon, it would give another one year authorization to the, to the funding for the road department as well as the schools. And it's anticipated through our, our advocate that that would be a retroactive amount, which means it would be for the full year, even though it may not occur till later in the fiscal year. So that was uh, somewhat good news, but it's not exactly what we're looking for, obviously, but it's, it's a step in the right direction. Any other items or? Uh, not at this time. Okay, any other issue? Okay, so at this point, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. I wanna remind folks, the next meeting will be Monday in Smith River at Howland Quit Hall. It's a joint meeting with Curry County at 3.30 in Smith River. And you might wanna remind where our next meeting is. Our next meeting is in Klamath, the second Tuesday of the month, on May 8th, uh, in Klamath at uh, York Tribal Headquarters there. So, and we'll roadshow continues.